Just I to direct to see what is happening, not to no ceremony. Not to brief it. Okay. Okay. okay, maybe you want to. Okay, fine. Right. Have the classroom. This is the briefing room where we brief the students. We have the. We fly the Robinson 66 helicopters. We also have flight simulator, which is a full motion sim in order to reduce the cost of uh, training on the real helicopters. It is on ground, you fly as if you are in the air and it costs less because you don't burn fuel and it's not subjected to uh, other hazard, operational hazards. So you make safe and landings and takeoffs without much waste of uh, resources. So that is introduced in order to reduce the cost of uh, training. Uh, so now we have the first set of students, about uh, 28 students, which have finished their uh, private pilot ground school and they are in the flying phase now. And we also look up to having uh, the second batch of the students and the school is uh, fully running at this time, sir. And uh, also the situation, the uh, location, of the school has also provided a lot of uh, job for the uh, local citizens around. And uh, as you are aware, sir, the helicopter market is very undertapped. Uh, and we hope to invest in that. We hope to train helicopter pilots. We hope that people will stop flying abroad to go and train. And not only the Nigerian market, the school is also established to get the uh, local African market and also as well as Europe and so on and so on because of the reduced cost of uh, training. Uh, so uh, we've started and we're doing uh, very well, sir. And my boss is flying, but uh, I'm sure he'll be with us, sir. So basically that's what we do, sir, except uh, if there is any question. And just to mention again, we run two types of programs. We have the uh, integrated helicopter, uh, helicopter flying course, which is about 10 month course. And the students pay all the tuition fee upfront. And within 10 months, they graduate. And we also have the ad hoc program, uh, which is pay as flyer as you pay for those that cannot afford the money upfront and also for uh, aviation enthusiasts anybody can come fly weekend uh, weekdays uh, for those that want to fly and if you, people don't have enough money uh, to do the full program then they can pay gradually until the acquire the required aeronautical experience and knowledge and passed all the practical test standards and then they are awarded the pilot certificate. Sir. So that's basically what we do, sir, except if there is any questions. Sir. Uh, yes, sir, like I said, sir, I am not the boss here, he's flying. My name is uh, Squadron Leader F.S. Maji and I'm a flight instructor and safety manager for the school, sir. The director is uh, Group Captain A.O. Jalassini. He's in the air and I'm sure he will join us any moment from now, sir. Okay. Okay, yes, sir. May I hand over the mic to him, sir? Not at all, sir. <laughs> well, the Honorable Minister, sir, and it's Entora, you are welcome to International Helicopter Flying School. Uh, I actually don't know where to start because I'm simply at a loss. I'm not aware of this visit and I don't really know what exactly we. I'm supposed to do, or was expected from me, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. 
All right, thank you very much, sir. Now I'm better enlightened. Well, sir, you are welcome once again, sir. Really, the International Helicopter Flying School is a unique establishment. No, I would have prefer to use this. Okay. It's a unique establishment. Um, it's a public-private partnership uh, institution. This used to be solely a Nigerian Air Force helicopter flying training school. And uh, a couple of years ago, I felt, one, there is no helicopter flying school in the whole of West Africa. In fact, in the entire African continent, it's only South Africa and Egypt. Egypt has some, in South Africa has well-developed uh, helicopter industry, and Egypt also has something, and that is all. So, the leadership of Nigerian Air Force felt, one, why don't we maximize this institution we have, let's use it to uh, improve the entire manpower development for the sub-region and even the entire continent. And then, if it becomes, of course, dwindling, in the face of dwindling resources, we have to make, maximize whatever we have. So it's okay, if we commercialize it, at least it's going to be self-sustaining and then instead of depending on resources that are dwindling, so many times budgetary allocations are not just enough to meet all we need to do. So, in a nutshell, the Air Force, through it, of course, the Air Force on its own is not a business outfit. But the Air Force, just like all the other services, have uh, business companies established. And one of such for the Nigerian Air Force is the Aeronautical Engineering and Technical Services Limited, AETSL. It's purely an Air Force company, or sorry, let me say Ministry of Defense company, run by the Nigerian Air Force, and it's, like I said, it's a limited company, so they run business, they can be sued, and they can sue anybody. Of course, Air Force cannot sue anybody, so if we do business, then we'll, we may have problems. So ATSL now was given the school. Go and look for partners, and... Uh, let's see how the school can run. So ATSL eventually went into partnership after several um, interests were shown and all were looked at. They eventually settled for Triax, the defunct Triax Airlines, which was operating, of course, from here, which had a no-go. In fact, they were using this same apron as their base then. So that culminated in the establishment of ATSL Triax Limited. And then they now are the owners of the flying school. Of course, it's no longer military. For us to be able to train people and they are acceptable outside, we needed to get Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority certification, which we started working on. So as it is, products of this school will actually come out with private pilot license, commercial pilot license, instrument rating, all the licenses that NCAA gives, depending on what the individual wants. We also make it to be, uh, we are very liberal. We want to meet the yearnings of everybody. There are people who don't really want to become professional pilots. They just want to fly for leisure. So they can come in, fly as they want, pay, we call it pay as you go. They can pay for five hours, we fly in one hour, give him necessary ground schooling to at least let him know what will be happening up there and then just fly them. Then there are those who want to have what we call the private pilot license. That qualifies you to fly your own aircraft or to fly an aircraft not for rewards so if you want to own your own aircraft you can have a private pilot license just like the governor of taraba has a private pilot like no 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 let's not allow you see we've read so many say i'm not please i'm not a politician but professionally there is absolutely nothing wrong it is absolutely correct and it did 
the requisite knowledge, uh, training and got the license, what happened can happen to anybody. It's not a case of failure. No, it's true. Uh, we have a high profile student here also. Don't ask me who it is. Well, we have so many people who are interested, who want to learn to fly the helicopters. They are fascinated. And I know some may end up probably buying their own helicopters. I'm sure maybe by the time we are done, the Honorable Minister may also be interested in... <laughs> <laughs> so, then we train commercial pilots. That's people who come out now as professional pilots. We have the commercial pilot license. And then to make them more um, professional and to make them to be able to compete very well, they can go on and have what we call the instrument rating. Instrument rating simply makes you to be able to now fly even in bad weather. You can fly relying purely on your instruments. You don't need to see anybody. You don't need to see anything. And so that is much about what we are doing for now. With time, we expect we'll be able to do flight instructors course. For now, all of us flight instructors here are trained abroad. Uh, eventually, in the next two years, we should be able to apply to NCAA to give to certify us to train flight instructors. Then the ultimate license is what is called uh, airline transport pilot license, ATPL. In the next two years, we should be able to run that. It doesn't mean Somebody without ATPL cannot fly in the airline industry. But what happens is you need ATPL for you to become a captain in the airline. That's the ultimate license. So for now, that means our products who have commercial pilot license can only be co-pilots when they join Aero, Contractors, Bristol, Pan Africa, all these helicopter companies. For them to become captains, Having met all other requirements, they must have the ATPL. So for now, you must do it abroad, of course. And we are required by law, you must operate CPL training for at least two years before they can now uh, authorize you for... In fact, Zaria, even after 40 years, they are still not doing ATPL. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, yeah, I won't, whatever. So basically, sir, that's what we are doing. Um... We have excellent facilities. If you have time, I would like to. Okay, I would like to show you our simulator. Then, uh, the, all the aircraft are airborne, but we can recall one. I just landed now, but another instructor has jumped in because this is commercial. So, business is of essence. Since I'm staying on ground, somebody has asked to take it up, and so that we don't just waste. The students have paid. As it is now, we have students from several, all Nigerians for now. Uh, we have Nigerian Air Force students, we have the police, we have from some states are sponsoring uh, their, their indigents also, and some individuals, at least we have about five, six private sponsored uh, students sponsored by their parents. Or, well, I don't know where the sponsorship, but I know they are not sponsored by state government or any organization. And I know that the Navy is already talking to us, Customs is talking to us, um, then the airlines are also showing interest. Bristol has come here, aero contractors, of course, they have been talking to us. So, ah, it's a good, we have very good prospects, very, very good prospects. So, unless you have further questions, I think that will be it. Sir. Um, no, sir. Let me, I want to put it in right perspective. I will say no. The age restriction we have, basically, is the age limit. As per, okay, sorry, sir. There is age limit. Minimum age. For you to have a private pilot license, you must be at least 17 years old. And to have a commercial pilot license, you must be at least 18 years old. So for us, we say for you to come into the school, because our program takes about one year, so minimum 17, so that by the time you are finishing your commercial pilot license, you are old enough to get the commercial pilot license. On the upper part, what the book says is at 60, you can no longer be a captain that is solely in charge. 
of an aircraft of a cop sorry sir of an airline aircraft you can be captain of your own aircraft if you are not carrying passengers then at 65 it's recommended you step down but so many people fly even abroad i went for my atpl check ride just last year and the person that did some refresher for me he was about 66 and he's still flying in that case actually you can instruct even at that age but not airline flying no so that's just the only but you can keep flying your own private aircraft so as long as you have of course we do medical check once you're above 40 below 40 is annually but 40 and above every six months you do your medical check so if anything is wrong of course once you don't have your medical certificate you can't your license is invalid yes sir um for the professional pilot program which culminates in cpl commercial pilot license instrument rates and everything which is what we actually uh encourage it's cost at the end of the day about with accommodation feeding medical checks medical cover because they are called they have medical insurance uh all the statutory charges we are going to pay ncaa because at every stage you are paying ncaa even to write their written examinations you pay them so everything put together is 15.5 million naira uh, only sir <laughs> but like the private pilot program anybody that wants to run the entire private pilot program with accommodation everything is about six point something about 6.8 million of course flying is expensive but the truth is the remuneration is also on the high side so i'm a government pilot sir <laughs> I'm not paid by any airline. I'm just paid as a normal Air Force officer. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm group captain Ayo Jolasimi. Okay, sir. What's the qualification? Uh, first and foremost, must have minimum of five credits in uh, SSCE including English and mathematics. Physics will be an added advantage. But we believe, actually, what we are doing is scientific. It's a lot of uh, motion and whatever, so all these vectors, scalars, and whatever will come in. But we believe, even if you are art biased, we should be able to break those basic principles down so we don't really insist on having a credit in physics to give people whether uh create big uh, better opportunities but english and maths of course they are not it's not our making because nca you must have what we call the lp uh, level six english before you can be a pilot then like i said earlier 17 years of age minimum then you must have what we call second class medical certificate ncaa second class medical certificate but for you to get a commercial pilot license you must have a first class certificate there is first class in health eh? yes, <laughs> what um maybe quickly thank you sir thank you honorable minister um well honorable minister we would just like to explain few things very 
few words about the two buildings there. And if you permit me, Honorable Minister, let me invite the Honorable Commissioner for Works, Enugu State, Engineer Godi Just, yeah. Yes. Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, these two buildings that we have here is just to assist with the, the construction of the international airport. Because those buildings uh, down there are going to be demolished. And to, for it to be done, uh, the state is building uh, these two buildings here. The, this one is uh, the library and the conference, and the other, the bigger one, is uh, uh, the administrative block for the Air Force. Okay. The one down the airport, they will be demolished. Uh, the 305 flight training school, Nigerian Air Force. Yeah, the 305 Flying Training School Nigerian Air Force. That's the headquarters. That blue, the blue roofs we are seeing. Yes, sir. That's the headquarters. The we have a hall and then the library there. So, like you said, because of the expansion of the airport, those buildings have to go. Uh, the state government is assisting Fan because it's Fan responsibility to relocate us. So the state government is assisting FAN to put up this uh, in replacement for those ones. So we are just occupying there until when this is completed, we move over, then um, have the other place. Well, let me thank the Nigerian Air Force uh, for the vision um, under the new transformation agenda to look beyond military services to help uh, to, to develop commercial programs that will enable you impact positively on the aviation industry as a whole. There is no better expertise this nation has outside the Air Force when it comes to flying, anything flying. Um, and the Nigerian Air Force has distinguished itself both at home and abroad. And it's one of one arm of our armed forces uh, that has done this nation you know, proud in all your operations. Uh, to think of uh, commercializing some of your training is very, very important. And that is the whole essence of the transformation agenda, that we must now do things differently. I believe if we had this idea some 30 years back, or even 20 years back, today Nigeria would be the hub for helicopter training in the continent. Uh, but it is important now that you have done so. There are so many things our armed forces can do for the civil population. This, the military civil relations is enforced by this kind of vision. And uh, the Air Force is doing it. Other services are also doing it in different theaters. We went to the um, to Kaduna, the uh, Defense Industries Corporations, and we saw a number of uh, civil programs that are coming on board. And that is very, very important. For the whole of West Africa, this is the only training school for helicopters. And Nigeria ought to give this capacity. I know how much we have been spending on training helicopter pilots abroad for our military services, police, customs, and so on. Now that this institute is here with first class facilities, I am sure it is going to make the cost of training much cheaper for this country. And it's also going to give us the capacity to service the rest of the West African sub-region. Uh, and even beyond. So we congratulate you for this vision. This school has taken off, and uh, it's one of those things that we are selling to the public. So please keep the standards as high as they can be in any other part of the world. I know that the Air Force you know, keeps that, that, that type of standards. So please make sure that this develops into Africa's best destinations for helicopter training. And this will really be a great service, not only to Nigeria, but to the continent as a whole. We thank you for your achievements.